I'd love to hear it. So today's big rock topic is helpful online tools. And you guys probably know some of the ones I'm going to start with. I'm going to talk about BSA National's website. I'm going to talk about the local council's website and some of the other things. But there are other sites that I use that I know Daryl uses and probably some of you guys use on a regular basis that really come in handy, uh, have great information, or give us some leg up in getting our jobs done. I put them into two different buckets. Uh, first bucket is official Boy Scouts of America sites, tools, things. And we as committee members often use this. We use it for training for almost all of us, youth protection all the way up to other things. Uh, and then the second bucket is some other third party, maybe it's a company, maybe it's an individual, who knows, that has some kind of site that has some kind of tool. Each of these can be useful. Be very careful on the third party sites. They can have outdated information, they can have false information, sometimes they get stale, or sometimes they don't have updated information. Uh, so just be aware of that. Whenever you are on a site that isn't a scouting.org or something like that, you gotta question, okay, is this the latest thing? Because things shift a little bit, awards shift, advancement has shift, shifted, uh, all these things. So just be aware of that. So let's talk about the official sites and tools first. Of course, the National Council website, uh, a lot of people, I wouldn't say complain, but you know, have some issues with finding the right information. Uh, I believe it was last month we had a gentleman in the back who was trying to tell, tell me how he gets to the monthly plans and uh, themes page that has all the PDF files for each month. And he was trying to remember the five-step process to do it. And it's right here. Here's the link. The easy way that I get to it is I go to Google and I say scouting, Cub Scout meeting plans. Boom. <laughs> Improve your Google foo. It'll get you there faster. But there are some good links, some really good stuff that's here. And, and, as, and you know, when you go to Boy Scouts of America National site, if it's on there, it's official, it's blessed. Guide to safe scouting is important. Annual planning, if you're going camping, you should have a copy. Um, this is good stuff. You can download this PDF file, a single one. You can download it in chapters. You can, I think there's an app, isn't there? I think there's an app, too, but you have to have internet access for it to work. Cubcast and Scoutcast is great. I'm a little bit geeky in my scout dome when I say this, but it is. If you're not familiar with Cubcast, anybody not familiar with Cubcast? Yeah, check it out. There's some good, really, John? No. <laughs> it's good stuff. You get a lot of questions. December 2014, there was a lawyer that came on and talked for 10 minutes about all the financial stuff that went crazy about a year ago. Go listen to that. He has a lot of great answers. Uh, the insignia guy is good, especially for your new parents that come in and they get their Cub Scout uniform and the, sun, the, the, the district rounder ends up over here or over here. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> We've all seen this, you know. Hand the insignia guy. If you happen to have a pack seamstress, she should have your insignia guy. Um, there is a pack seamstress in the room. But <laughs> medical forms. <laughs> no hiding here. Uh, every scout should have a medical form in your pack. We like to get our medical forms out, the blank ones out, to new members as soon as they join. So then when we come to, uh, and I say this almost every month, when we come to uh, summer camp, we're not chasing down medical forms at the last minute, right? Get those medical forms out there. Work over that. Uh, this is a screen capture of BSA National site. You've probably all seen it. It's good information. It's just a little hard to troll through and find what you want. Again, improve your Google food. Questions? No? Okay. My dot scouting. I'm going to be very careful when I say this. My dot scouting. Everybody. Everybody should be familiar with, at least a little bit with my dot scouting, right? Anybody not familiar with my dot scouting? Because everybody did their youth protection probably on my dot scouting, yes. So the key for everybody is the dashboard. Everything's under there. Training, you can update your profile, your email address, your uh, physical address, all that kind of stuff. You can't change your, um, your title, what you are. You can't say, oh, I'm not a Weeblos leader, I'm a Cub Master. You actually have to go down to council 
and submit a application or do a return. Uh, all kinds of good stuff in here. If you're key three, cab master, committee chair, chartered order rep, possibly delegate, I'm not sure if you can delegate on this. There are some things under here that are very useful for your unit. Three that I like are the member manager and the training manager. There are some other things in there I'll show you in just a second that I have barely ever used as committee chair for two and a half years. Uh, here's the login. You guys are probably familiar with this. Sorry, I had to widen it so there's lots of extra stuff. Um, everything's up here, right? Everything else in the page is completely worthless. You've got to go up and click that thing. And you have your dashboard. The dashboard takes you directly to youth protection training. And if you want to go over and do other training, if you're a new den leader, if you're a cub master, it's over here in the training center. And you click on ham and cub scouting, and boom, you've got all this great stuff. And one of these will take you to Scouting U, right? Yes. Scouting University, which is, which is a different site, but it's blended seamlessly, pretty much. I mean, it'll, it'll take yeah. you right there. You click on Take Course, and boom, you're off and going. It works. It's been clunky for the first few months, but they finally fixed, I think, all the issues, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> you know? I've used it. It's always just... It's, it's a little... It takes a little getting used to, but yeah. it's there. And everybody here has used the training, right? At least for youth protection. Um, it works. If I go back, for those of you who are in key three, this is my pack, and it drops down to a series of tools. For you den leaders and others, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but you probably don't even want to deal with this stuff. Member manager is one of my favorites because if I have somebody come in, either a youth or adult, hand me a youth application, an adult application, and I take it down to council or hand it to my guy who's always down at council, and I'm like, did that get handed in? Did that clear council? I can go in here and say, hey, I got a new adult. Is he on the list? Is he trained? Does council know he's trained? Does the database know he's trained? It's all in here. That's the page. The other one is youth. I get a new youth application. Did that work? Ah, there's my list. You can go through and look at everybody. The handy thing about youth, I've had this happen almost every single year. In traditional units, when, and it might happen in LDS units too, when you have a youth crossover to a Boy Scout troop, I have more than once had one of those scouts get stuck in our roster because for whatever reason, the application got lost it didn't get filled out, it ended up on somebody's desk, and three months later they're still on our roster. What is, what is Bobby doing in our roster? He should be in Troop 123. And if you see that, you can follow up with the troop and say, hey, did you guys do it? Oh, that's right. That happened with Josh Williams for like six months. No, it was, it was ridiculous. Our Cub Masters kid. So that's useful. Does your roster look right? The other one that's handy is the training manager. As a key three, you can go in and say, okay, who's trained, who's not trained? Both position-specific leader training and youth protection training. Uh, these here, the, these little buttons give you a report in PDF format. I like to keep mine on my flash drive so I have it handy to look up what's going on. This is just a different view. It's a kind of a view. As key three, you have the ability to add training to anyone in your unit except for yourself. That is right here. As a Cub Master, as a Committee Chair, you can, I believe, Pack Trainer, and also Chartered Order Rep, I assume, you can sit down with somebody and train them face to face, if you want, if you feel comfortable doing that. And then you can go in here and say, oh, I trained Bob as a den leader. We sat for two hours and talked about den leaders. And the process is kind of ridiculous. I didn't do a screen capture, but it works. The other thing that happens, this happened to Phil actually. Phil went and did IOLS training, uh, what was it, May 2013? It was, I believe it was before his application cleared council. And so the guy who did the training went through and said, okay, Phil's here, great, and then tried to look him up in the database, he didn't exist. Oh well, put that on the shelf. And Phil emails me his card with a photo and says, I did this. So I went and I added it for him. Because, you know, you should get credit for the, the classes you took. That happens too, yeah, comment. The other thing is when if you've taken it one time and somehow you've lost your login. Okay. And you want yes. to create a new login. Now you They're totally separate. Places. Yeah. You train on one, yet council says or BSA says you haven't. And yeah. And you actually can find that person, you'll look at it, you'll see it, and like, well, how come you guys can't put these yes. together? 
That's when you just go in there and do it yourself. I've seen that happen once or twice at the district level where somebody created an account. And I think you can only link your BSA ID to one account. Yes. So they have to resolve that somewhere in the database. And Hopefully yeah. you got right. Yeah. Called their Absolutely. 800 number. So this has happened to down at national. Down at national. <laughs> what did they tell me? That person needs to call them. Uh, I can't do it, so I just go in there and do it myself. Right. Just especially I if you can. Go there, but you can't. Me on the yeah. phone, we'll, we'll do it. For me, like with Phil, or, or I've had a couple people hand me their card. If you go to training, always keep your card. <laughs> by the way, hand me your card. Take a photo of your card. Email it to me. To me, that's proof. I'm done. Boom. Finish. Yes, Chris. Something to remember is this works really well on a computer, <laughs> not so well on any mobile device I've tried. Excellent point. Thank you, Chris. Um, I have never tried it on my phone. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, you can get there, right? You can get there. Yeah. But the text is black on black background, <sighs> so you can't read any of the menus. <laughs> and it's not resizable and it bleeds off to the side. Yeah. You, scroll, so. you have to go and do this. The other thing is, and this was before they changed the training, uh, it used to be, we had a committee member who I, I kept telling me, get training. She said, I kept getting training. She did it on her phone. And it never took. Oh, no. And f it was like four times, and I was like, ah, and finally we convinced her to sit down at a computer and do it, and it was fine. Uh, so thanks, Chris. That's a great point. Questions or comments about my dot scout? It's a good tool. Um, there's more things, I believe there are more things coming online on my dot scouting. So especially if you're a key three, get familiar with it. It feels a little funny, I know, but I think it's flash or something. Or is it, do you know what it is in the back end? It feels kind of flashy. Could be. I don't know. But it's, it's weird, but just get used to it. It's okay. That'd be a good reason why it wouldn't work on mobile device. I, yeah, exactly, right. So you, you can also print out membership mm -hmm. uh, cards for yep. your, your youth. Yeah, if nice. you do the member manager, yep. and you go, for instance, to adult, and I click on my Cub Master, there's a button up at the top of that cutoff that says, print your member cards, and it's a PDF file. And it, it yeah, exactly. And then they have their number for when they do their training yep. or whatever. They, they have and that's a, that's a great point, actually. When I have a new adult come in, I just had it a couple, like last month, a new, a new committee member sign on. He did his youth protection, he did uh, a couple of other training things, and when his application cleared council, I saw it, I downloaded that PDF file, and I sent it to him via email. Here's your membership card, here's your number, go to the, I'll get to the other site in a second where you can link those two things together. Question? So my question is, um, I know that there's certain things you're not supposed to laminate. Can we laminate all those cards for the kids? I don't see why not. Okay. I mean, I know like the, you know, there's certain things that are not. I would say be. with, I believe with youth and adults, you get a new card every year. And realistically, the card doesn't mean much of anything. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, I think we just got them in the mail from Recharter. My treasurer was handing them out because her husband's the cup master. They everything comes to their place at our committee meeting on Tuesday. Great. More cards. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I've got one for all the boys. And yeah. Week. Yeah, you can so laminate it. Sure like it's valid until December, and then they'll get a new one. Yeah. Uh, okay. You only really need to save one that has your number on it, and then once you have your number, they're just yeah. replaceable. And realistically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've used my number for ages, so I don't know. But you, you can. Sometimes, if you go to some trainings, you'll have to sign it. You'll have to write your number. If, if you have a laminated that you really want to use, that's <laughs> a great way to do it. For me, I wouldn't waste the laminate sheet, but that's just where I'm at. Uh, other, questions, other questions or comments? Okay. Um, I know it drives me nuts too. The next one is my scouting.scouting. This is the older tool. Uh, what they've been doing is they've been pulling t the variety of tools that used to be on here off incrementally and pushing them over to my.scouting. But there are still a couple of very useful and important things here that especially as key three we have to do, you have to use or should be using. Uh, and I'll get to these. Be a scout unit tool, the tour and activity plans, and like I mentioned, this is where you link your BSA ID with the account that you created to do youth protection. You bring those together here. There's the login page. Most people are probably familiar with this. Um, if you're not, here it is. And you log in. I've got a few extra things on here because I'm a commissioner, so ignore this and that. But the important stuff is unit tools. 
And then up here at your, you have a little profile thing that almost got cut off on the screen. Uh, let's talk about be a scout. For those of us who are committee member, committee chair especially, if you have a delegate, I have a delegate in my pack who harasses me mercilessly, or, or a cub master, or a charter org rep, you want to make sure that when somebody goes to bscout.org and they type in your zip code, that your unit shows up and correct information is on there. This is how you do that. So this is my packs, right? Uh, oh, look, my number and everything. Hey, how about that? Um, you have a primary designee for contact. You have alternate contacts. You specify the address that you meet at. Here are the two most important things. Pin status, active. If it's inactive, your pin will not show up. And apply status. I talked about this last month. Recruitment. There are youth online applications. They're snazzy. You can go paperless as a pack, essentially. Adult applications aren't up yet. They're working on it. They've been working on it for months. The other thing is, you know, website's nice. And Heather, do you want to talk about the class that you took and, and what I'm doing down here? Do you want to take a moment? It looks, it looks better. Because you're the one that told me to do this. Yes. And you could convey that to everyone else. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I understand that. Heather Cooper-Crossman, <laughs> my PAC secretary, everybody. Yay, Heather. Um, at University of Scouting, I went to the, the Scout uh, training. And the couple things that they mentioned being important is making sure that you have who your chartered org is, where you meet, and a sample of what you're doing, what your pack is doing. And for us also, we meet at a location that is separate from where our chartered org is. We're chartered by the PTO, but we meet at the nearby church. So making sure that we put what, where we primarily draw from. So we're chartered by the PTO. We primarily draw our scouts from that school. So they don't think we're part of the church versus the school is kind of confusing. So basically they said the more information you can put on there, the better. If you've got somebody who's willing to update it monthly with, we're hey, here's weeks. what we're doing. Yeah, we're every couple weeks, look, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing now to show that you're active and you have stuff going on and yeah, I mean, just lots of information and correct information. So the important thing is if somebody goes and searches for a pack and they search your zip code, you want, you want to show up and you want to have a good presence. Thanks, Heather. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and so this is basically what people see. I just mentioned to you the supply status. Somebody can go online and do two things. They can, there are two buttons down at the bottom. One is ask for information, and the bottom one is apply now. If they ask for information, what you'll get is you know, lead status. If somebody sends you a, hi, my name is Joe, and I have a kid, Bobby, in the neighborhood, and we'd like to know more about your pack, you're going to get a lead. And this, again, goes to those same three contacts. So you'll get an email, and then you'll say, oh, OK, I need to go on and figure this out. You can view the message. You can write notes about whether or not you contacted them, whether they've applied, all that kind of stuff. So that's this. When they apply, you get something in the membership application management over here on the far right. And it comes in virtually. And basically, you say as a committee chair, as a cub master, or chartered org rep, yes, I approve this scout. And then you can print right here what they call a voucher that has a big special code that you take down to council. And if you're a traditional unit, you pay council right then and there, and they have this little thing. And it's only been happening for about six months. So then council people at the desk try to figure out what you're doing, and you have to remind them. That it's right there, and Kelly Mills helps you out. Uh, but it's really great because it's all online, and all you got to do is spit out, and this spits out a PDF file. It's fantastic. And that, okay, so, so that's the, the one set. That's all under Be a Scout. The next thing is the tour and activity plan. If you're going somewhere with your scouts, especially overnight, you should be filing a tour and activity plan. All that is done here. You can go to tourplans.scouting.org before logging in here. It'll kick you out and send you to the login page for myscouting.scout. I kid you not. So you gotta log into this and then go here. My guess is they're changing it. I don't know when, but that's the way it works. Life's on quicken right now. Uh, and you'll, you'll go into this is my pack's tour and activity plan. You can see some of the tour plans are submitted for Brian's perusal over the past uh, couple years and it's really easy to use. 
you say, I want to create a new plan. You say, go, it's a 12 step process. You amend for all your wrongs and do all those things. And finally it goes and ships off to Brian and he says, yeah, you're great. You basically estimate, and you have to do this, I believe it's 14 days beforehand. It's really handy if you do. Yeah. Uh, too many people said the morning of they're leaving. Yeah. Like the point is, it's a plan. It's not sunk in concrete. Do the best you can two weeks before to say, okay, these four people or five people are driving. This is who's coming. This guy's CPR trained. This guy's first aid trained. We're all youth protection trained. Everybody's happy. Just go through the process. It's fine. And then you're covered if something ever happens. Anything to add to that, Brian? Um, no. Okay. A lot of units, what they'll do is they'll take all the adults within their unit, take everybody's information, and send that same sheet every time. Because the driver's may change <laughs> from date one to the date of the activity. <laughs> if you just do that, you're covered. Yeah, that's true. Just, so just you're, say, you're say everybody's going. Well, we need that. We need that for all the kids' protection. That's why we need it. So all right. Just okay. do that. Send that in. Boom. Done. And really, we don't keep them that long. After your yeah. event's over, we shred it. OK. Uh, the, the point is they want to know where you're going, what you're doing, and when you're going to come back. Question. What are the parameters that make this a requirement to fill out the plan? Insurance. I, I'm sorry, the, the actual tour. Is it overnight? Is it a certain mileage um, away from I, home? It depends on who you ask. The, the going theory is it never hurts to file one. If you're going to be overnight somewhere, you should. The last one I did was family camping at Camp Clark. And before that, we had an overnight at Evergreen where we carpooled. We did an overnighter at the zoo recently. It was great, by the way. And we went as families. So I figure if every family is driving, we're not going as a unit, so whatever. We're going as families over to our next camping trip, well, two days from now. So I'm not bothering to file a, a, a tour plan for that. But if we're going to get together and we're going to do it like Boy Scouts and do massive carpooling and it's a long trip, I'm going to file a plan. Make sense? Yeah. Over, over, overnight for me is definitely a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Should I do that? Yeah, there's, 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 yeah, it's weird. There's actually, there's a class at University of Scouting taught by a venture crew guy that's really good. If you really want to know the answer to that question, go to that class at U of, U of Scouting. Otherwise, my recommendation is, when in doubt, just file one. Any other questions? Who is the person, is that the dead leader then? If you are a dead leader and you're taking your scouts, let's say for instance you're a Wee Below's dead leader, right Phil? And you're going to take your scouts Wee Below's camping, which you can do, you should be filing a tour plan through your chartered org rep or your committee chair or your cub master. Because you as a den leader, I don't think we're going to have access to this. I could be wrong, I'd be surprised. But you should be able to shoot your cub master, your, your, your CC and say, Hey, I'm taking my scouts camping. If you're taking your wolf den, you're a wolf den leader, right? We just did. No, I'm the James. Oh, okay. We just did last weekend. But did you go overnight? Yes. Where'd you go? We, did, um, we went to Sub. Okay. Really close. As a as a den, as a pack. As a den. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But it was all families. Oh, okay, so it's really kind of a family thing. Yeah. For me, uh, I don't want to worry about it, but you could. And you could send to your charter work rep or your CC or your cub master and say, hey, would you just file a tour plan for me? Here's who's going. Here's who, they want to know who's first aid trained, if anybody's CPR trained, who has weather hazards training. And if it's all you, tell them that. And then they can just go through and say, yep, 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 and, and all this stuff. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or you might be able to get in this den leader. I never tried having a den leader get in here. Phil, that's a cue for you to try. Uh, to get in here and try filing a tour plan. I think we have had a den leader. You have? Okay, so it's entirely plausible. I've just never seen it happen. I've, I've done it. Yeah. Uh, I do it for the troop. Okay. But um, I think it limits your ability to select people by their uh, the affiliation. Training. Oh, by the training. I think it knows training. I don't know. Um, it, it's worth trying out, especially if you're going to do things with your with your yeah. uh, den more often. Because I don't, I don't get a full list of people to choose from. Interesting. I don't know the answer to that. That's a question. Partial Experimentation is required. Okay, I looked it up. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. When do you when do you need to complete a tour activity? Um, trips of 500 miles or more, trips oh, yeah. outside the council borders, except to non-council-owned property, trips to the floor to any of the um, big the high adventure bases. 
when conducting any of the following activities outside of council or district events. Um, aquatic activities, climbing or rappelling, orientation, flights, shooting sports, any activity involving motorized vehicles as part of the program, snowmobiles, boats, etc., at the council's request, contact your local council for so guidelines. None of those activities are essentially so that's that's kind of appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But <laughs> it's never a bad idea. So for me, like I said, we're going camping this weekend over to Cumberland. I'm not bothering. We went to the zoo for a, a, an overnight or two weeks ago. I didn't bother. But we drove far enough to Evergreen that I thought, yeah, I better just put one in. It's outside of council. No, that's actually not. That's uh, outside of district. That's Eagle Valley. Okay. But it's not outside of council. Other questions? Are those guidelines, even if you take your cubs to the local community pool for swimming activity? Yeah, that's swimming. a good point. Yes. Because that's a, that's an insurance thing. It's the lawyers. The world is run by lawyers and accountants, by the way. Uh, former coworker of mine was this thing. Um, a great other example I presented back in June: pack activities outside of the pack meeting. And one of the great overnighters in our area is the Newport Aquarium. They do a great overnight program outside of our council. That is the OTC. So if you take a group of scouts to the Newport Aquarium, have fun, file a tour plan. Questions, comments? All right. Service hours. Everybody does service, right? Who does service? Community service, conservation service, scouting is all about service. Um, you should really report your service that you do as a PAC or as a DEN because council wants to know, national wants to know. It's a sales bullet point for us. How many service hours our scouts put in for our communities and for our earth every year. You'll see the number somewhere. Uh, there's the link. Every service project, is a den, is a pack, whatever, should be um, reported. This includes scouting for food. That's a service project. Here's the login. Um, and you're going to see a page like this. It's kind of crazy, but there are two links that matter. This one is show me what I've done before, and you'll get a list like ours. The other one is, I need to file a new one. And you'll get a huge list of possible things. The one that we use a lot is litter cleanup and beautification for pulling weeds or cleaning up the parking lot full of litter. Uh, we've also done uh, Messengers of Peace and, uh, was the community dimension. And we've done a few others in here. But basically pick one that seems right and you'll get a fill out form. What they want to know is the date you did your project, the number of registered scouts, registered youth, I, I consider that Cub Scouts in my pack, unregistered youth, siblings, older, younger, whatever, registered adult leaders, and unregistered leaders, adult parents, etc. And then finally, the grand sum total of hours worked. So if you have 20 people work four hours, that's 80 hours. And if Billy Cub Scout worked for two and Bobby worked for ten, it doesn't matter. Just sum it all up and put that there. And then you write a little bit about, you know, what we did, who we partnered with. Click Submit. Don't forget to click Submit. And you're there. Questions or comments? Don't forget to report your service hours. It folds into JTE also. Yes. yes that's what it's say. Yes. Um, it's it's easy. I think you have to apply for a different login or something, but use that. Especially if you're a service project coordinator, you're a cup master, committee chair. You should be using that. Internet advancement, Daryl, stand up. <laughs> um, this is important. One person, typically an advancement chair, we have an advancement chair in that, uh, typically should be responsible for the advancement tool. If you are not using it, you should be, because they have paper forms, right? I heard rumor that council is discontinuing paper forms. That paper forms will likely no longer be available for internet advancement reporting. Uh, Daryl's been using internet advancement for two years or so now, I think. Roughly. At least. Something, something like that. Something like that. The login looks like this. So uh, notice unit ID is not your unit number. It is a unique ID that you get from council via national that I think is five or six digits. And it's unique to your unit, 
of all the units of the nation, I believe. So to get this, you is based off of myscouting.org. It's in the legacy tools. It's not anymore. You have to go no, straight, you have to go straight go, here. No. You go to it. Really? I was on it like a week ago. Okay. <laughs> well, you can also go straight to the Internet Advancement at this link. Okay. So but either way. I log into it okay. through, um, I log, log into my, my, scouting, my scouting. scouting, and then if you go to the legacy tools, okay. it pulls it up. Oh, right, yes. Okay. So Does that log you in automatically? No, you still have to, you still have to log in. It still comes to the screen. <laughs> right. But that's how I find it. So they're basically just pointing at you, here it is, and you don't have to remember the big one. <laughs> yes. Okay. But once you log in, you get a page that looks like this, and Daryl can talk for a second about what happens next. Okay, so you always, and here you have to continue. Is the, uh, this is just a screen cap. Okay, <laughs> and then <laughs> it'll give you the option to uh, load the roster or um, create your own or something. Like that. Uh, upload a file. Yeah. So it'll either load your roster or it'll update a file. Um, you don't have a. No, okay, a so when you load the roster, it'll give you pictures of, or it'll give you names of all the scouts that you've registered. And then you'll have lines across the side that'll have awards, um, advancement, uh, pins. It's got the, the old belt loops on there. It's got different categories. And then you have to click for each uh, each scout. You have to click on their name and the appropriate. So if it's a bear and he earned his bear rank, you have to click bear, go to the rank, and then enter the date, and then hit submit, and then load it up. Um, and you have to go through for every scout, for everything they earn. Um, so basically, you, you pull the roster from the database, it's the easiest way to do yeah. it. You tell them what they earn, and then you submit the report to the database, but then it gives you a chance to save or print a okay. report, right? Yeah, it always gives you a chance to preview it before you print it out, and then you print it out, and you take it to council when you, when you go the buy store. stuff, when you go down yeah. to the store. Um, so it's kind of a three-step process. And I, I remember trying one time and thinking, whoa, this is weird. But you've gotten really accustomed to it. Yeah, it's it's cumbersome because you can't click more than one scout at a time. It's right. each can't scout do a batch thing. Um, so, right. but you cannot get a rank batch without filling out a report. And they want it through internet advancement. So, so next month I'm going to be doing this a lot. Yeah. Um, yep. So just going through and do every one all at once, and then pre and then print out one report and take one report down. Okay. So you'll go through. If you have more questions later on, I can. Yeah, I can I'll talk keep you. your number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah, okay. mostly it. So again, council is moving away from paper copies toward this. If you're doing this kind of thing, get get used to it. Uh, okay, moving on to the voice of scouting. Started last year. I believe this has a lot to do with the new rank advancement stuff. I'm sorry, go ahead, Chris. So, uh, the city council is moving away from the paper copies. Yes. So, the way I've been submitting advancement reports is through Scoutbook, which is another online. Okay, we'll talk and, about that. And it creates a PDF okay. and I email okay. it. Is well, we, that still accepted? So, you can email to council that, that PDF. Okay, I've never done that. I haven't seen. I've had that scout book shoot out that report to me, and then try to upload it into here, and it skips like about half of the scouts. It doesn't register. Mm -hmm. It'll register like half of them, and the other half will say, "I don't recognize these names." So it's easier. It's still kind. I didn't know you could email, and I'll have to check that out. Yeah. That because if I could email that file to council. Definitely. Then that would be yeah. Because every that month that I create a PO of the things I need to purchase, I create a PDF yeah. of the advancement form. I attach it to an email. I send it to Scout Shop, and then okay, they, they have it all ready right for you. Nice. Okay, like I'll have to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. I, I would have to imagine. <laughs> yeah, I have somebody who has classes downtown, ah. and so I send the PO and the advancement form off. I call them with the credit card number and pay for it, and then. Whoever is downtown picks it up. I would have to imagine the Internet Advancement PDF, whatever report they have, you can treat the same way. Because Scoutbook is it essentially creates the same data for you, right? right. And what Daryl's trying to I'm guessing that when I send that to them, they're probably then going in and entering it into this system themselves. 
themselves? Most likely. Yeah. Um, so if I did this way, that might save somebody else. It would save somebody else. Probably, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that the scout shop wants to see is a report that says, yes, Billy, Bobby, and Jimmy are on the wolf. And so they're not going to give it out without that. So, so it seemed to me like that was very simple in the past. We'd go down to the scout shop and fill out that form there at the yeah. scout shop. This seems yeah. a lot. I, I haven't heard definitively that you can't do that yet, but I heard that they're working their way that direction. So, council wants to shift the burden of work from them to you. To you. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. I get it. I see it. <laughs> and so that's, what that's what this is. Yeah. is you're typing this up in the computer instead of, well, when you take it, that paper form down, someone at council has to then it's, go type all that stuff into here. It's more than just that, though. When you read it a paper form, Bobby Jones earned Wolf. He's registered as Robert. So somebody has to resolve that. And, and, and I know that the TE spend a lot of time, the professional staff, figuring out those names. And, and maybe Bobby goes by his middle name, Jack. And he wrote Jack Jones. And that's to go figure out who Jack Jones is. And I remember it was uh, David O'Connor, right before he left for his, he left his position as a professional, was going through hundreds of those, trying to clear them out before he left. And I had no idea until I sat down and had a dinner with him, and I was like, oh wow, okay. That's what you do for a living. All right, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, so this will help them because basically you're pulling down the roster, and it'll say, Jimmy, not James, or whatever. It'll have their registered name, and it'll resolve all those for you. Oh yeah, it's not John, it's Jack, or Jack and John, whatever. So yeah, that I think after we get through it the first time, exactly. it'll, we'll be used yeah. to it then. Exactly. Okay. Can I ask one last question? Go ahead. You are the basic person. You have that. You have that latitude. And I will exchange numbers. Um, but so is this really just when they're gaining their rank? You two are. Or is this month to okay. month? Okay. Segments month? are not tracked in this for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. But advanced but, uh, adventures are. Achievements are. Yeah. And and some of the awards are. Like uh, oh, cyber ship, ship. Award. cyber ship, yeah, yeah, messengers of peace. The old belt loops are still in here. Um, you of... can the Weedlow's pins are in here. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the new adventures you can put in each one as they earn them. Um, the like the summertime activity award, pretty much every award is in there. And then BSA likes to know all the awards they earn because they keep track of numbers of oh so many scouts are in this. Yeah, right. The only ones you have to put in here are the rank. Yeah. The only ones you have to do are rank. That the scout shop won't sell you unless yeah. you have a report. Right. You but, can go down and buy a stack of outdoor activity awards if you want. Yeah. So it's that whether how much you want to help council or national and council out with their tracking. Yeah. Or not. So well, if you want to have a stack of these on the side just in case with Billy weren't this thing. Yeah, so. All right, uh, you, yeah, you two definitely can talk about this. All right, moving on. Voice of Scouting. Uh, it's a big resource, especially for us Cub Scouters. Uh, has monthly round t online roundtables. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I think they're just kind of spinning this up. It's a lot of support articles and a lot of social media stuff. Daryl found a social media certification, which is kind of cool. I haven't gone through it yet. Uh, it looks kind of like this. Uh, go through and check it out. There's some good stuff on here. These are all still BSA count, uh, national run, by the way. The uniform guide, again, a great site to send your new families to. It's kind of interactive. Uh, it's all about the uniforms. It ties in with the BSA insignia guide that's more in depth, but this kind of gives you a glossy color series of photos and things. Uh, also, a lot of local patches, like our district rounder, is not on here because this is national. The rounders are council, so there's a little bit missing. But for instance, you go to the site and this is what you see. You say, oh yeah, I have a wolf scout. And the wolf scout needs these things. And it will say, come from Weebelow scouts, for boy scouts, for adult leaders. They're all in there. It's kind of clever. Again, I think it's kind of flash based. It feels that way. But it's neat because you can go and drag it to the right spot and make sure you got the right thing. Uh, again, a great site to point your new families to. Uh, if you don't want to go down to the scout store, scout store is online, scoutstuff.org. The prices are exactly the same. Shipping is kind of atrocious. What I like to use this for, and Daryl does this too, is we're gonna go, okay, we expect to have 14 scouts earn the Outdoor Activity Award patch. How expensive is that again? 
Outdoor Activity Award patch. Search for it, and it comes out, oh, 379. All right, that's an expensive one, right? It's easy to go look up what the price is, and you're 98% sure when you get down to the scout shop, it's going to be the exact same price. So that helps us with budgeting, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of neat stuff in here. You can buy a whole uniform online if you want. So uh, that's kind of a neat thing. I like, I like it for that predictive, how much the things cost. Cub Hub, uh, supposedly the official home of Cub Scouting on the web. Again, run by National Council. It's more of an external facing sort of a promotions thing. Uh, it might be the kind of thing to put a link to on your website. They seem to be working on putting uh, leader guide information on the site. But right now, last time I checked, there's only den leader information. But there's a lot of it. So if you're a den leader and you're looking for stuff for your den leader meetings, check out Cub Hub. Uh, there are spots for Cub Master and committee um, resources, but they're currently not populated. Stay tuned. Check in later for more. Um, there could very well be a lot of information here. Pinewood Derby, if you're a Pinewood Derby fanatic, there's a web page. Uh, there's a bit of history here in terms of what they have on the page, and they have a whole thing of how it got started. Um, there are some good videos. The really good videos are on YouTube if you're a Pinewood Derby guy or gal and you want to make an awesome car. It looks kind of like this. Again, it's, it's clever, it's flashy, it's um, probably flash based again, and it's all animated. There's not a lot of real meat here. It's more of a marketing promotional tool, but it's out there. Boys Life has a web page. It's pretty much what you'd expect. It is the online version of the Boys Life magazine. Uh, yes, shown that those scouts who subscribe to a Boys Life stay in scouting more often, all that stuff. It's there. It's glossy, it's color, it's accessible. You can get to it on your tablet, whatever. Um, it's kind of cool. Even better, in my opinion, is Scouting Magazine for us scouters. It's pretty much exactly what you expect. It's an online version, but the cool thing is, if you're new and you're looking for resources from the past, you can go, again, practice your Google Foo, Scouting Magazine, space. A great example was the Oreo cookie test. Anybody know the Oreo cookie test? Yeah, uh, John does. It's a great one. It was about, I want to say it was four or five years ago, there was an article on Scouting Magazine about that. And I, I sent out a link a couple months ago. All that stuff is in here. All those past articles, all those things. And a lot of it still applies. And of course, there's recent stuff too. And there's stuff that's online that you won't find in the publication that comes to your door every month or every other month or whatever it is. So that's a good one. I like that. Scouting Wire supposedly the official blog of the scouting movement. It is fairly new. It was introduced, is that February 2015? It was introduced, wow, I, I missed the zero, sorry guys. It was introduced last year. Uh, it's supposedly both for volunteers and professionals. It, it primarily focuses on what's coming up, what's new, what you can expect, changes, things like that. There's probably a lot of stuff in here right now. I'm guessing about the new Boy Scout requirements. Um, there are some very helpful articles. It's good stuff. It's kind of more challenging to, uh, to root around and find things. But, um, and there are some other links up here for other things I'll tell you about. The next one is the BSA Brand Center. If you are a membership and recruitment person, the BSA Brand Center is great for logos, for images, for videos, for your website, for flyers, whatever. Um, these can be really useful for creating those recruitment flyers, for making a banner for making videos. There's all kinds of stuff in here. If you're looking for that Florida Lee, if you're looking for that Cub Scout symbol and a good quality version of it, that's the place to go. If you're an Eagle Scout, National Eagle Scout Association, there's a lot of history I didn't realize about this. There used to be a thing called the Knights of Dunlice. I can't remember how to pronounce that. There was a video I watched about this that went for years and years and kind of fizzled out in the 70s. And NISA sort of replaced that. Uh, they're trying to create a national, um, not really a registry, but a list of Eagle Scouts. What year they, uh, they earned Eagle Scout, where they're living, what they're doing. If you're an Eagle Scout, or you know an Eagle Scout, that's something to go and register on. And there's some good stuff there. Not a lot of good stuff, but it's kind of a thing. All right. Our council has, of course, a web page. And... Um, 
I'm going a little slower than I expected, sorry guys. There are three things that I use on the council website on a regular basis. When I have to go call somebody, I always go to the contact. Okay, um, the advancement person is, who's the advancement person? Michelle. Michelle Bauman. What's her phone number again? Boom, right there. Uh, the calendar. Ah, oh, what day is that training again? Boom, calendar. Council's new calendar program is a bit cumbersome. I'm just going to put it, it's there, it exists. It's not perfect. Council, if you're watching. <laughs> the office and stores, they have the phone numbers, they have the hours, they have the locations. If you're in McMinnville and you're like, oh, i got to hand in that youth application, there's an office in McMinnville. Look that up. That's what it looks like. There's also a bunch of things, all the districts have pages, and there's other stuff going on, but those are kind of, for me, the primary things. Of course, there's also, please keep your booze, Tentaroo. Everyone in their unit, every unit should have a Tentaroo account to register for camps, things like Weevil Those Woods. Individuals, you can also have one, register for things like Wood Badge, University of Scouting, um, things like that. Super weekends. Uh, yes, Tentaru is a um, problematic child of sorts. I've heard lots of complaints, and I know the people in the council have heard lots of complaints. But I guarantee you we're going to be stuck with this one for a while, so get used to it. You log in. Uh, I captured this a few months ago. There's actually a new button right here. I'll get to that in a second. So basically, you go and you select what thing you want to do and you select who's going to go, and I think that's about it. Finish any other things, and you check out. It's a little weird. The new one is products. You can buy special patches and a few other things. I think it's just the, the, the fancy patches, right? Daryl and Heather, you want to show us your fancy patch? Oh. There's, there's a new um, centennial thing. Daryl's got it on his right pocket, and they've got Shoulder patches, those, and what else? Oh, there's OA. Um, OA runs. OA They've got a whole, also. they're all part of the all centennial. All for the board. centennial thing. You can order that here. I, I, last I checked, council office did not have them they physically. Have the red border. They do have they some have of this, them. and they have a whole red border set of, okay. of the shoulder patches. There's, They've got four different sets plus a big square right. one. And so there's a whole bunch of centennial patches. If you go on to Tentaroo and you're interested in this, have a special patch for the 100th anniversary of our council, you'll have all of them to choose from and they'll probably mail and it to you. If you go down to buy them, you buy them from the council, not, not the store. Not the store, yes. The council, the council window has them. Yep. So this is where all of the summer camp signs up, right. signs are, and everything else. So if you've got a new den and they want to go to uh, Camp Ireland or something, it's going to be in here. I think it's up, camps. And it can be kind of cumbersome to slide through. Oh, wait, wait, what is this under camps or is this under Ireland? I'm sure the council is kind of sorry. Uh, scout community. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, Scoutcommunity.com. I know, it's .com, not .org. And if you are a merit badge counselor, you need to know about this. Council is changing the way they register merit badge counselors. They are no longer doing paper applications. It is all through scoutcommunity.com. Everybody got an email about, was it a year ago or nine months ago? Come join Scout Community. Everybody thought it was spam. It's not. If you're a merit badge counselor or you know one, make sure you get on Scout Community, register, make sure you uh, have your merit badges that you counsel for on here uh, listed correctly. Yes, it's kind of of little use to us Cub Scouters. Just know that it exists and it's real. It looks like this. And when you log in, and the whole point of this is, I'm Phil, I'm an assistant scout master with Troop 685, and I have somebody come up to me and say, Phil, I want to earn the bugling merit badge. And Phil's like, oh, man, I don't know. Search for bugling merit badge. Boom. And I search for backpacking right here. You can see all the people that have offered their services to teach the bugling, the backpacking, the camping merit badge, whatever it is. It's him. Hardly anybody has registered yet. That's district by district. Our district has a web page. Uh, we have some upcoming events, some meetings, some training information. We have our calendar. We have our district contacts. It is a bit challenging for our district people to get in and add a lot of content here. Be aware of that. Our district website looks like this. 
Uh, okay, we're going to move on to Scout Book and some of the advancement stuff. Chris mentioned Scout Book a little bit ago. Here's the, the Scout Book. It's .com, interestingly. Uh, it's a great unit level tool. You can do roster, you can do advancement. There, we talked about calendars and emails in the past. Uh, if Ann were here, she'd tell us about how she has all of her den parents' emails registered and they can set up a thing where before they go on a field trip, four days beforehand they send a, a, a reminder and then a day beforehand a final reminder. I've heard it's great. We haven't adopted it to that extent. Have you adopted it? Oh yeah. To that, I mean, you use it a lot. You use the calendar mm -hmm. and yes, all kinds of great uses to send out notices to the parents when they mm -hmm. have meeting time changes. I have multiple reminders for committee meetings. Right. A week ahead, three days ahead, two hours ahead. <laughs> Many meetings coming. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What's the cost? Daryl? About one dollar per scout. They have it in per year. Like, oh, per, it's per, per year. Per year. Contract or? It's it's like starts at like ten dollars and then it goes up in okay. groups of like yeah, I think five. The first X are included in their base price yeah. and then as you have more boys you track for that. Um, you can have unlimited leaders. They don't cost more. Uh, parents, they don't cost more, right. so your parents can log in and, and update the stuff that they work on at home. Yep. Um, it's really attuned to advancement tracking. Right. Well, we use Scout Track. Okay, and one that's one of my next advanced. ones in a bit. Uh, for those of you who don't use it, it looks kind of like this. It's it's designed to work equally well, relatively speaking, on a computer, on a phone, on a tablet. And so if you crank it up on a computer, it looks like this and huge. If it's on your phone, it'll be a little bit. But it's all menu driven, and it actually works pretty well. So I go to my dashboard, and I see my boys. And I, since I'm a key three, I'm a leader, I have a pack. And I can go in and see, OK, my different dens, uh, what have they accomplished? And I can go into each den, into each individual scout as a pack leader. And Phil, as a den leader, can go into his den if he chooses to and add that, oh, we accomplish these three things in our den meeting and keep Daryl up to date, that sort of thing. Very handy, uh, but there are other tools out there. We're going to go into the third-party sites, one of them, Scout Track. I say, I heard Scout Track, right? Right. Uh, it's, I believe, an internet-based. It's not a software you install on your computer, right? Right. Okay. So it is internet-based. There's a, there's a version for patches, a version for troops. Same thing as Scout Book, I believe. Uh, Scout Book's one. One for the whole thing. Yeah, you can just fly the troop. Fascinating. Or, okay. Um, this is an older tool. It's been used for a long time. There's a lot of history behind this. Uh, I don't have a lot. I got a few screenshots. You register, you log in. Everybody has a login, right? That they can register for right. leaders. And you can basically go through, and this is from a pack, I believe, or maybe a tiger leader. I'm not sure. But you basically go through and say, here are the things that we've done, and it tracks your progress and where the scouts are. Anything to add to that? Uh, it depends on what you're defined as. So if I might define the, the committee chair, I'm okay. the uh, advancement coordinator, I'm also listed as the pack leader, I'm also the parent of right. one of my scouts. Right. And depending on where you can put yourself, um, when they send out, when your band leader send out emails, mm -hmm. if you're listed as one of the leaders of that den, you'll get that email too. So as a okay. committee chair, I get everybody, all the dens mail just because so I can see what they're doing. Okay, they're right. And you can set that up. It has a calendar, just like all okay. the rest. You put in calendar. Has you can set the reminder dates however you want to do okay. it. Okay. Um, it just looks clunky. <laughs> okay. But it works well. Okay. And, and it they've updated it to, to contain all the new awards. Okay. Um, it just obviously doesn't have segments. Right. Okay. Are, uh, what's the cost on that in comparison to the curiosity? Uh, I want to say it's forty dollars a year. Flat. I don't think I have that information because it is an offer. So roughly similar to, and it's not based on how many scouts, it's just yeah, a flat thing. We have you know, okay. 40 plus scouts. So if you have 100 scouts in your pack, that's a better deal. <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought it was interesting that they charge per scout. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. Information in that. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one is Cub Trails. Does anybody use Cub Trails here? It's a little more esoteric. I haven't heard a lot of people who use it. Um, it is, it's online. Dan meetings, pack meetings. So this is grabbed from some about us thing, by the way. And here's the cost structure. Um, so it's actually quite a bit more than um, which one was this? Scout track, almost $100 a pack per year. Uh, 
doesn't look too bad. And yeah, I don't know really what's in here, but I haven't met anybody that actually uses it. I know that it exists. Packmaster is another one. This is uh, originally there was Troopmaster. I think this was one of the first uh, online tools. And I think it was actually started as a software package you installed via disk, floppy disk in your computer back in the day. It was Troopmaster, they expanded to Packmaster. Now they've got a standalone software package you can install. They've got this add-on central database, so it syncs to the to the cloud. And then they've got a web tool version too. And they've all got different costs associated with them. Uh, apparently this one has a neat thing for treasure, what they call a ledger, which I think might be handy if you have a treasurer who is pulling their hair out. Scalpel has a treasury thing? Yeah. Okay, we should look into that. <laughs> um, and there's a little quote down here promoting Packmaster. Again, I don't know a lot about it. All I know is that the weird thing I did see about this is I got on the Packmaster webpage and I said, okay, let's see, I'll select Oregon and the city. And I found, oh look, Pack 122 in Salem. I could just like wander onto their login page. Which to me seems like a little bit of a security potential issue, but whatever. Um, so basically that's how that works. It's a web interface and, or the software interface. We go for that. Those are the advancement tools that I know of. Does anybody know of any others that I missed? No, but I'm interested in getting a list of all the different links. You will get this. I will email this to you. Okay. Uh, this entire slide set at the end of the day today. Okay. You can go through and have fun. Okay, another one that Daryl and I use a lot, and I'm sure some of you know about, is meritbadge.org. This is one of my favorite websites ever, because I'm a scout geek. Uh, it's a wiki-based thing. So it's, it's not totally collaborative like, like Wikipedia. There are a group of people that kind of um, administer it, but it's a great source. Despite its name, it's not just for Boy Scouts. There's Cub Scout stuff, there's venturing, there's varsity. All kinds of stuff in here. We've got advancement, there are awards, there's uniform information, all kinds of good things. This is kind of the front page. Um, one of my favorite links is over here, Scouter Awards. And if you go down, you can see the different ranks. It'll tell you about the requirements, the adventures, the awards that they can earn. Uh, for instance, this is the bear requirement page. And each one's broken down into here are the required ones. And it'll link you to the page that describes that adventure and all the different requirements for that adventure. And I'm sure down further down there are the uh, elective adventures and all the other things. They're talking about the Conservation Good Turn Award and some of the uh, other things you can earn as a Bear Scout. This is a great uh, set of information. There's a whole list of Cub Scout Awards, top to bottom. Things that you can earn, everything from the uh, Outdoor Activity Award and the Amateur Radio Operator all the way down to some of the more esoteric ones. And they describe them in great detail. A lot of my information that I present to you comes from here, hint, hint. There's also adult awards, a huge list. In fact, the bottom of this page is all the discontinued awards that you see people that come in. I saw Margot had one today. Oh, she was a Tiger Den leader in an award. All kinds of stuff. All the requirements are on here. All the, uh, the pages that you fill out to nominate somebody for District Award of Merit. It's all there. It's great stuff. Uh, the U.S. Scouting Service Project is another one. This is a rather large collection. There's a discussion forum, there are resources, and there are sub-sites too. I haven't found this to be quite as useful, but it's good to know about. Uh, Cubmaster.org is good for pack meters. There's also a clip art section. Again, if you, if you go to the, uh, NAD, the logo page and you don't find what you're looking for, check this out. I have a whole bunch of clip art. Uh, Mech Scouter has a variety of resources, and Blue's Bugle's been around for a long time. It's kind of a blog. Looks kind of like this. Boy Scout Trail is um, a set of resources to bring boys through Cub Scouting, Weeblos, and Boy Scouts, so it focuses on the entire spectrum. Uh, they've got a whole list of games, advancements, awards, ceremonies, jokes, all this here. It's a great thing. If you're going camping and you need to point your, your den leaders at, here's a bunch of jokes, here's one of the sites. Or here's a, here's a bunch of skits. Or what can I do in my next pack meeting that's different? Check it out. Another one that Phil pointed me to about a month ago, uh, Phil pointed me to this link right here. And I said, wait, what is this site all about? Because I've never seen it before. This is a new one to me as of a month ago. Uh, Scoutorama. There are a lot of skits on here. And a lot of good skits. 
that I haven't seen for a while. If you're getting that, oh, that skit again, what's the one, my den leader forgot my skit skit, one more time, the invisible bus skit, send your den leaders here. Great list of things. This is what it looks like. The, um, if you go directly to these pages, they look just a little bit different, but it's a good site. Scouter Mom is good. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Venturing. Again, ideas for games, gathering activities, puzzles, stories, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a blog sort of a thing. Lots of good stuff in here. Check it out, troll around. Uh, one of my other favorites, we're not, most of us here aren't involved in troop level things, but Clark Blink Green is a long time uh, Scoutmaster, and I'm not sure where he's out of. He runs a podcast and publishes, I believe, every week. And he's up to over 300, last I checked. And he's fun to listen to. He's just kind of a crotchety old guy who has good ideas about scouting. He focuses a lot of things on the patrol method and boy scouting. Uh, there are a few things in here about Cub Scouting. This is a good resource to know about. Uh, Scoutmaster CG, CG for Clark Green. His site looks like this. Uh, almost done. Scoutlander, if you're looking for a place to put a web page for your unit and you don't want to pay money, there's your place. It's a free spot to land a web page. You don't get pack485.org for free, but you can have scoutlander.com slash whatever pack485. And this is the interface. You create a login. It's free. It's nice. I'm sure there's limited space, but you can have an online presence at no charge. What did I miss? What do you guys use? Any did you, other thoughts? Did you have uscouts.org on there? U.S. Scouts? U or is it U.S. Scouts? U.S. Scout pro uh, US Scouts Project was back here, right? Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and there's a ton of stuff under here. I think they've kind of combined things. So if you look at this, you've got, uh, let's see here, Cub Masters goes to cubmaster.org. Um, Max Scouter is in here, basically run by the same thing. Billy's Bugle has been around for a so, long time. So their pages for Cub Scout requirements are some of the best oh, they I've are. seen on the internet. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I don't use this much, but it, that's They're good. fantastic. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, anybody else use other things that are different for advancement, for awards, for ideas? Um, Brian, on Facebook, there's a Brian on Scouting, and sometimes you'll see yeah. it on... Uh, He's part of the official. He's part of the official. I think he works for that comes out. I can't remember which, which site he works for. Um, but if you go search right on Scouting, on Scouting, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, he does articles and stuff like that periodically. Mm -hmm. Like he had one around towards the beginning of tax season, the expenses that you can deduct, right. scouting expenses that you can deduct. As a volunteer. As a volunteer. Yeah. And just different topics of all over. So yeah. I read his articles a lot. And, he works for National, so I think he's got connected to the magazine some, so he does scouting, magazine. scouting, the scouting yeah, magazines. Yeah, that's where his thing was on the scouting magazine webpage that had a little sidebar for him. Yeah, Brian so Scott. that's another. That's good stuff. Anybody else? Ideas? I know it's getting kind of late. I'm sorry. We're running, running a little bit over, but uh, go ahead, Chris. So I don't use it as much for the Cub Scouts, but when I was a venture advisor, we used uh, Blogspot. Oh, for your webpage. For our webpage. Nice. And then with all of the various Google tools that have compiled, mm -hmm. we had a Google group mm -hmm. that new parents and new student, new uh, scouts come in, new Adam is in there. Yeah. They immediately have been granted permissions because they're members of that group to view the web pages and okay. the roster. Cool. Um, so that all of that ties in well. We had a Google Docs, yeah, uh, a Google Drive folder where all of our shared documents were. Mm -hmm. And again, same it's all linked. It's all connected. It's all Google. Very cool. Yeah, we've been trying to do that as a pack uh, quite a bit. We have sort of our, our pack level leadership linked in Google Docs, and some of us don't use Google Docs, but Daryl, but a lot of us do. <laughs> and you know, people who have Google a Gmail address kind of have that linked in already, which is nice. So that's a good one. Google has a great set of tools to use if you wish. Anything else? I'd love to hear if you guys is useful at all. Anyone? All right, kind of okay. Um, that's what I've got, and if you have any other thoughts or ideas, I'd love to hear about it.